a major pattern shift is setting up for the end of November. We're expecting an astonishing amount of precipitation across the states over the next couple of weeks. And where could we see some snow falling for Thanksgiving? It's November 15th, 2025. Let's get into the weather updates. So what do I mean when I say we're about to see a major pattern shift? Well, here's what our 500 millibar height anomalies look like right now. We've got a lot of ridging really from coast to coast, although over the next few days, we're going to have some troughing with some moisture trying to push down into New England, and it will likely bring a good amount of snow to inner New England and up into the mountains. And we have a trough diving into the west. But again, the central US is warm. We actually broke heat records across the plains yesterday. But as we move forward in time, this is expected to change and drastically. We'll see our storm system move into the northeast and our storm system beginning to move down into the west. Now, this is going to bring a lot of precipitation for the west and then eventually for the central plains and out east. As we move through next week and into next weekend, you can see all of that energy beginning to transfer out to the east. And this is where our pattern shift sets up. Around Thanksgiving, it does look like we're going to see a storm and troughing pattern that favors the west and central plains while putting the east under a brief ridge warming it up and drying it out although i think once we get into december that'll change take a look at the agreement across our global ensemble models this is for thanksgiving evening and while it is still about 12 days away it is very impressive to see our ensemble models singing the same tune at this time frame here's our european ensemble notice the western and central plains troughing here's our european ai ensemble here's our gfs ensemble and here's the canadian ensemble showing us again why if we're talking cold air and snow potential around thanksgiving this seems to be the region for it and potentially the midwest what we're looking at here is noah's 8 to 14 day temperature outlook notice the obvious split in the country we're well below average out west and then from the plains out east we're well above average well look what happens when we push out a little bit further here's our three to four week temperature outlook from noah so if you're wondering why i put major shift in the thumbnail this is why. All of those above average temperatures from the plains and out east look like they're going to be pushed off into the south and east, and we may have a little bit of a southeastern ridge that doesn't quite want to move out. So Alabama, Georgia, Florida, I'm sorry, you may have to wait a little bit longer for this cool air. But remember, when this cool air is pushing this warm air out over the next two to three weeks, we're likely going to see an elevated chance for severe weather out in this region and also a ton of precipitation for the plains and out east. Take a look at the rainfall expectations from the Climate Prediction Center over the next six to ten days. Really, everyone gets involved, but especially you guys down here from the Southern Plains up through portions of the Ohio Valley. And that continues as we push two weeks out. And speaking of precipitation, in the short term, if you're out in California or the Southwest, here we go. You're going to receive a ton of rainfall and snow for the high elevations over the next 72 hours. The Weather Prediction Center has actually given us a large, slight to moderate risk for excessive rainfall today. So be sure if you're out here to have your weather alerts on, flash flooding will be possible in this region. All right, so let's take a look at our latest GFS run and see how the next two weeks could unfold. As I said, we have some warm temperatures in the center of the country right now. This is going to last a little bit longer, but don't worry, the cool air's coming. We have that cold air troughing moving into upper New England. I've been saying this for weeks. New England looks cold, New England looks wet, and it's true. And it's gonna continue for a little bit longer. So, snow for portions of inner New England and the high elevations. And cold rain for the rest of you. Again, as we get into Sunday and Monday, all of this moisture begins to funnel into the west. And this is really just gonna be rain for everyone down at the low elevations and snow for everyone up at the higher elevations. Specifically, the Sierra Nevadas should get a lot of snow. There is the chance as we push into Tuesday and the European model is seeing this as well. We have a low pressure system pushing up against our polar jet and the Euro and GFS actually are hinting at a little bit of accumulating snow for Minneapolis. It's going to be tough though because the timing of this matters because the surface temperatures will be above freezing for much of the day Monday and Tuesday but at nighttime we'll get below freezing. So what are the temperatures at because this could end up being cold rain or slush and we could see really no accumulation. Moving into the middle of next week Wednesday, Thursday and Friday we start to see our subtropical jet activate it and you can see this low pressure system trying to eject off through the southern plains. This is when the rainfall out east is really expected to crank up. And notice out west, we still have this moisture pummeling the coast. Temperature wise though, through next week, it does look pretty warm for most of us. There is the possibility as well that this comes with a severe weather threat, so we're gonna have to watch this. Pushing a little bit farther into next week, depending on what our polar jet is doing, this could end up being ice and snow for New England, so that's something else we're gonna have to watch. We have a lot of ridging happening out west, so this is the 22nd, 23rd of November. Kind of a zonal flow, not much expected to be going on during this brief period at the end of next weekend but then we push into the 24th just a few days before thanksgiving and this is where we have a signal on the globals for a potential pattern change 
to start taking shape. Here comes the trough diving down into the northwest, potentially interacting with another low pressure system, moving up through the southern plains. Again, we'd want to watch out for severe weather here, but snow is beginning to move into the Rockies again. And then, and we're kind of in la la land here, but the GFS thinks, hey, a major Ohio Valley snowstorm for Thanksgiving is possible, potentially even a nor'easter type system for portions of the mid Atlantic and New England. End of the model run right here. So there's not a ton of consensus. I would not quite buy into this yet. I 100% buy into the polar jet beginning to collapse, as you see there and as you see right behind it, setting up an active time frame for snowstorms at the end of November and into the beginning of December. But it's too far out to see exactly who these snowstorms affect. We need a little bit more time. But let me show you where we do have some model consensus. I made a post on my ex recently, or Twitter, whatever you call it, talking about how cold December could be and talking about this transition out of November. In the year 2000, we had a very similar atmospheric setup in November going into December. And here's what our 500 millibar height anomaly map ended up looking like for December of 2000. Notice the troughing across the central and eastern US, the ridging over Alaska and the blocking over Greenland, and the troughing out there just to the southwest of our Alaskan ridge. Well, guess what? This is almost the exact pattern the European ensemble sees for our December. This is from November 30th to December 30th, and this is the European extended ensemble. Notice the blocking over Greenland, the ridging over Alaska, and then we have some energy out there to the southwest of our Alaskan Ridge. So what did temperatures look like for December of 2000? Something like this. This is a combination of the 2000 and 1983 year, but they both looked similar. And it was very, very cold for the Plains and everyone out east, including a little bit below average for Florida. The Northern Rockies and Northwest were also below average. It was really just that Southwestern region that saw above average temperatures. Last but not least, let's look at the latest teleconnections update. Our European Extended Ensemble teleconnection expects the AO to go negative or the Arctic Oscillation to go negative and stay negative at least through the first two weeks of December. This is not surprising to see. We are expecting a sudden stratospheric warming event to take place. It's really already begun and this will help to push our stratospheric polar vortex towards a collapse, therefore displacing that Arctic air down to the south and pushing our tropospheric polar vortex even farther to the south as well. During this same time frame, look at our EPO. This suggests some significant Alaskan ridging, displacing the coldest air into the plains and out east. As we lead into Christmas week, our North Atlantic Oscillation or NAO also looks very negative during this time frame. And a negative NAO typically means colder air for the east and a more active winter storm track for the east. You combine that with the EPO, the Alaskan ridging, and the negative AO because of that polar vortex disruption, this is favoring good snow for the plains and especially out east through the first couple of weeks of December, in my opinion, the most towards mid-December. And by the way, if you want a white Christmas out east, you definitely don't mind seeing this positive PNA leading up to December 25th. This can also displace the coldest air out east, and it doesn't hurt for the beginning of December to see a negative WPO as well for the plains and east. This is pointing towards some serious ridging out west to start December and a lot more cold and snow potential for the plains and out east, like I keep saying, but does this hold through December or does this change? change as we get into the third or fourth week of December, right as Christmas time is coming around. I do think we'll see this pattern extend through most of December, but I'll continue to bring you these updates. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I make posts like this every single morning, and then after I post, I get on and live stream to answer all of your weather-related questions. In my opinion, we also have the best weather community out there, so if you want to join the Discord and become a member of the Climate Crew, the link for the Discord is right down in the description. Again, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video or the live stream right after I post this.